Hello everyone. Today we will be talking about liver. Liver is the largest uh, organ in the body. It has both exocrine as well as endocrine parts. It occupies the right hypochondrium, the epigastrium and the left hypochondrium up to the left lateral plane. Uh, the factors that keep the liver in position are the veins that drain into the IVC, the intra-abdominal pressure created due to the abdominal muscles and the least important factors are the peritoneal ligaments of the liver. Uh, to hold the liver in anatomical position, we will first see the IVC. So this is the groove of the IVC that will keep on the superior surface. And the IVC will be kept vertically as it has a groove on the posterior surface. Next, we will see the superior surface. It is convex, so concave or convex. The concavity is for the cardiac impression. So we will see the superior surface as convex, so concave or convex. And we will see the, uh, we'll keep the wedge shaped liver on the Right. Uh, the liver has two surfaces, the parietal surface and the visceral surface. The parietal surface is further subdivided, subdivided into the superior surface, the anterior surface, the lateral surface, the right lateral surface and the posterior surface. The posterior surface, this is the posterior surface, it is separated from the inferior surface by a posterior inferior border. And the inferior surface is separated from the right lateral and the anterior surface by a sharp inferior wall. When we talk about the lobes of the liver, so liver uh, in anatomical, uh, anatomically has two lobes, the right lobe, the larger right lobe and the left lobe divided by the falciform ligament. Then next we have, uh, we will talk about the superior surface. The superior surface is convexo concave or convex surface and it is depressed, uh, has a depression in the middle known as the cardiac impression. The right lateral surface is convex on all sides and is covered with the peritoneum. It is related to the under surface of the part of the diaphragm, the 7 to 11th ribs on the right side. When we talk about the anterior surface, again it is divided anatomically into the right and the left lobe by the falciform ligament. Uh, the left part has uh, is beneath the left coastal margin and is related to the diaphragm of and the 7th and 8th costal cartilage. When we talk about the posterior surface, so between posterior, it is uh, situated between the posterior superior and the posterior inferior border. This is the posterior superior border, this is the posterior inferior border. The surface between both is the posterior surface. When we talk about the bare area of the liver, the bare area is a non-peritoneal area on the posterior surface of the right lobe where the liver cells are covered by the fibrous glycine capsule. It, its apex has a right triangular ligament. Its base has the groove for the IVC and its upper and lower limit are separated by the superior and inferior layers of the coronary ligament. Next, when we talk about the groove for the IVC, it is a non-peritoneal vertical groove which is pierced by the hepatic veins and has the inferior vena cava. This is the caudate lobe of the liver. The caudate lobe of the liver is bounded on right by the vena cava groove, on the left by the fissure of the ligamentum venosum. This is the fissure for the ligamentum venosum and above by the, posterior, uh, above by the superior border and below by the porta hepatis. Next we have the quadrate lobe. The boundaries of the quadrate lobe are to the right we have the fossa for the gallbladder. To the left we have the fissure for the ligamentum teres. Superiorly it has uh, the porta hepatis and the quadrate lobe and inferiorly the inferior sharp border of the liver. Then we have the porta hepatis. The structure in the porta hepatis are first the cystic duct. Then we have the portal vein and the arteries. The lips of the porta hepatis gives attachment to the anterior and the posterior layer of the ligamentum or the lesser omentum. Next we have the ligamentum venosum. It is a deep vertical cleft for the ligamentum venosum. The ligamentum venosum is a remnant of the ductus venosus of the fetal life. Next we have the groove for the ligamentum teres. This has ligamentum teres hepatis which is a remnant of obliterated left umbilical vein. Next we have certain impressions on the visceral surface of the liver. The first impression is the gastric impression which is present on the under surface of the left lobe of the liver. This is our tuber omentale. The next impression we have is the duodenal impression which is just adjacent to the neck of the gallbladder. 
Next we have the colic impression which is just adjacent to the body of the gallbladder and next we have the renal impression. The peritoneal folds, uh, the, when we talk about the ligaments of the liver, there are two ligaments. The two ligaments are the ligamentum teres hepaticus in the uh, fissure for the teres, uh, ligamentum teres and the other one is the ligamentum venosum. As I said earlier, the ligamentum teres is the obliterated left, le uh, left umbilical vein and the ligamentum venosum is the obliterated ductus venosus. Other than that, we have the peritoneal fold. The first one is the falciform ligament. The next we have is the coronary ligament. This is our coronary ligament which goes on to form the right triangular, the left triangular ligament and the right triangular ligament and we have the lesser omentum.